Escape Party people, welcome to another video. Today's episode is on car polishing for beginners. I'm going to speak directly to a beginner. Here I am, one polish, one machine, one pad. It can be that simple to get the desired results that you want for your car or truck. So this is my go-to. When I say one polish, this was the original single product polish. What that means is that this polish will go from heavy defect removal or wet sanding marks down to a swirl free finish with only one product, a single product, not the endless products, compounds and polishes that the industry would have you believe. So it can be that simple. Let me just demonstrate it for you and then I'll explain the actual steps and processes so that you can leave this video, get the required products and tools and get the results that you want. Here are my Flex Cordless Random Orbital Polisher. I'll explain more about that in a minute. Got a foam pad, pick whatever foam pad you want. Firm, soft, matters not. I just wanna get you off the fence and do something to your car so that it looks better than it currently does. When it comes to this product, I place it onto the pad. And yes, I'm working in direct sunlight. What you need to know is that everything that I am doing you will find some pseudo expert on YouTube that will tell you the complete opposite. Oh, never season your pad that way. Never use a polish in direct sunlight. You have to use a compound first, then you use a polish. So every single thing I say, you will find some pseudo expert on YouTube that will tell you the exact opposite. And it's hard to know which voice to tune into. So I am here trying to be the critical voice in your world, the critical voice of reason and logic. Now we'll tell you, here we have our test model for the day. Uh, Hunter, what year is this again? Uh, 2005, 100, over 100,000 miles on it. It's been exposed to the Southern California sun for its entire life. This has clear coat on it. And by the way, your car will have clear coat on it. This is a video for a whole nother time. We have prepared the surface. We've cleaned it and we have used a clay bar on it to decontaminate the surface. What does that mean? Well, there's this stuff called pollution. It's essentially dirt that floats around in the air. Some of that dirt will land on your car in the form of dust and dirt. You can wash most of that off. Some of those dirt particles will actually stick to your paint. They will become a permanent fixture to your paint. It is what is in this industry called bonded surface contaminants. So, I absolutely recommend that you remove or clean that surface first with a dedicated clay bar. It's not a requirement, meaning you can still get good results if you don't do it, but I highly recommend it because A, it's going to affect your end results, so you will get better results if you do it. Also, it's going to affect your user experience, regardless of the polish or compounds, regardless of the pad, regardless, regardless of the machine, it will affect because you'll be trying to polish through that stuff, the little dirt particles that you can feel. What we're trying to create here is a smooth, clean surface. That means there's no superficial dirt as well as there's no uh, bonded dirt particles to it. So you're attempting to create a silky smooth surface. As a little sidebar, I will tell you, which very few people will tell you, if you use a clay bar, which I recommend, and everything in life always has trade-offs. So the trade-off is, is that a clay bar will prep your surface the way it should be. The problem is, is that it will do some type of scratching. Hey, Nestor. It will do some type of scratching or abrading in the process. That's the trade-off. It's a good trade-off because now you're gonna come in with some polish and you're going to fix not only that, but you're going to restore the shine and luster and depth of your clear coat or your car paint. You can call it what you want. So now that we've prepped the surface, I've got my polish. This is how Darren seasons his pad. I don't overthink it. Once again, you're gonna get endless pseudo experts that will overthink everything, make everything they possibly can from a little molehill into a big, massive mountain. Why? Well, because it's cooler, it's sexier, it's more glamorous, but it also confuses you guys. So put the pad, the buffer directly onto the paint and you turn it on. 
Remember, you always remain in control. What do I mean by that? Well, you've got a speed setting here on the buffer. So you can dial it down if you're extra fearful. You can dial it up if you want faster results. That's a speed setting. You can control the pressure. You can control how long you stay in a given area. You can control how much polish. So there's all kinds of ways that you can maintain control. But once again, is you literally could just not overthink it. Say, okay, I'm just gonna go with a speed setting of five. I'm going to put about that much polish that I just saw Darren put on his pad. And I'm just gonna go to town like this. Bam, you just polished your car for the first time, perhaps the first time. Now you take a microfiber cloth. Why microfiber? Because it's the softest, most gentlest cloth for your car. Now you only have about 100,000 choices in microfibers. So yes, you can be overwhelmed just by that one decision on what kind of cloth to use. Don't overthink it, just pick a microfiber cloth. This is the very uh, popular, very generic cloth from, wait for it, Costco, Kirkland brand. Wipe it off, bam. Now you'll see whether it's showing up back there or not because this is what I would call a light medium colored truck specifically. So if this was black paint, it would be easier to see a distinction between the area I polished and the area I have not polished. That's not the critical part of the video right now. I just wanna show you that, wow, okay, it could be that easy. So then what you would do is you would just be rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Okay, I polished that area, now I move on to the next area, and then the next area, and the next area until you've done your entire vehicle. That simple. Now you may have noticed that there was a certain amount of dust that was flinging as I polished. Well, I intentionally did that because it's a very common question. How do I reduce or how do I eliminate the dust? Once again, everything has in life has trade-offs. So while you may chase a product because it will say low dusting or no dusting, that has to do with the formulation. Now, most people will prefer no dusting formulation. I promise you every formulation, every polish, every compound will dust to some degree. So you could formulate a product where it virtually has almost zero dusting, but the trade-off is, is they have to add all kinds of additives to that polish to get it to not dust. Most of that stuff is not wanted. Why? Because I just want results. I want results in a, an efficient and effective and a safe manner. So therefore, this will dust like everything else. So depending upon what you're comparing it to, will kind of determine whether you would call this more dusty, less dusty. How do you control that? Is probably the better question. Pick a brush. I mean, literally you can use so many types of brushes. Here's even a toothbrush. And just for demonstration purposes, I will use a toothbrush. So what that does is it kicks off and releases that spent used polish, as well as the material that you're taking off with that polish. Yes, that may sound scary to you. So let me explain another point here. Polishing, what is it? Well, it's using abrasive technology. Think of it like this way. Polishes or compounds, and this is a polish, polishes and compounds are like liquid sandpaper. So they have uh, abrasive particles that are, su are suspended in a formulation so that you can work with it. So on sandpaper, for example, those abrasive particles are attached to a piece of paper so that you can use it by hand. Well, this is suspended in a liquid so that you can use it on a machine or by hand. So what you're doing is you're literally scratching your way to success. You're scratching your way to perfection. That doesn't mean you're going to keep polishing your car or truck until you have perfection. That's a video for another time, but you're going to scratch your way to success. Success in this moment means shinier paint, more depth to your paint, more gloss to your paint. However you want to structure that, 
it is better. I think it would be unanimous and most people would say, hey, I would prefer my truck or car to be shinier, not less shinier. This is how you do it. I clean my pad. Now I will perform that little step there probably every two to three applications of polish. So now that I've cleaned my pad, I'm going to apply some additional polish to the moment. I'm also going to bring you in closer so that you can see me working and um, the process of polishing how as I'm working, the paint will become shinier and shinier and shinier. Here we have our test panel. Let me show you what it's like to watch a panel of paint to go from okay to better, better, better. This is the amount of polish that I put on my pad the second time around. You can tell that I've applied it in a rather un-uniform pattern because I don't need to overthink it. Place it on the panel, apply enough pressure to control your pad and your buffer. I'm actually going to dial this all the way up to a speed setting of six and show you the process. Microfiber cloth, time to wipe off, wipes off very easily. So I remove the polish, it's showing some shine. I don't know how much of it's gonna show up on the camera because this is, once again, medium to light colored paint. If it was black, it would show much more uh, distinction and difference between the after versus the before. You also may have noticed like, okay, Darren went up and down, went back and forth. So that's a very common way to go about what I call gridding your car. So imagine a grid and it's like, okay, a grid helps you keep track of the position of the buffer, that kind of stuff. So what you did is you created a grid here so that you have complete uniform coverage or polishing of what you've done. But I did not polish up here. Um, obviously I didn't go outside over here, but this is where you know, it's one thing to polish a nice flat open area of a car, but it's like, well, Darren, what do I do about this? This is black vinyl trim. Actually, it's not very black. It's rather gray right now. So this is not something that you want to polish directly. Is it unsafe to get polisher compound on this? Well, that largely depends upon the type of polisher compound that you have chosen. As a rule, I'm going to protect this area. There's a few ways you can do that in case the fear of God has been inserted into your brain by the endless uh, experts on YouTube, which is, oh, I don't wanna burn an edge, therefore you should always polish a car by hand because hand is safer than machine. Well, I promise you, your hand, trying to buff it by hand, is never going to replicate what you can achieve with a machine. You will not be able to replicate the consistency, the pressure, the speed, everything. So yeah, by all means do it by hand. You just have to accept that your results will be far less uh, than what you can achieve by a machine. The random orbital polisher, which I just used, that is a very safe machine. It is the machine that I recommend for any beginner. But with that said, is there still gonna be a certain amount of fear in your little psyche that you may want to manage? You can manage it with some painter's tape. It's not just about fear though, it's actually, yes, you do need to manage certain parts of it like this black trim or this gray trim. So you put some tape across it just like that. So now you can polish right up to this edge and you will not stain your black trim. Now, if you're afraid of the edges, you can do the same with this. You can apply it right to the edge. Like 
like so. Press it down. Now, once again, I promise you, you can find a hundred videos that will teach you that, oh my gosh, you never buff with tape because you're gonna somehow transfer some of this adhesive or tape onto the paint. Yes, I could do that if I wanted to, but I can also not do that by not being a retard about it. So that's where trade-offs come in. It's like, oh, well, I'm really worried about the edges. Okay, now you don't have to worry about the edges. Well, but I saw this other video where they said, don't ever tape and uh, put the buffer across the tape. It's like, well, okay, only you can decide. I'm just gonna tell you what I do in my world and what can work for you as a beginner. What we have over here also is this thing called the, I don't know, what are we gonna call this? The latch, the tailgate lash, latch. Let me be more distinct in how I enunciate that. So once again, let's find a form of prophylactic. Painter's tape to me is a great choice and a prophylactic, which is just a glorified name for protection. So I'm applying some protection to this black tailgate handle. And yes, there is kind of an art to taping off in ways that will maximize your ability to polish the paint while simultaneously protecting the area that you want protected. But once again, you do not have to overthink that. And it's also something that I have to apply to my customers, which is a realistic amount of expectations. So if I get up and I scrutinize anything from, you know, four inches away, I'm gonna see stuff that will be bothersome. But guess what, how many people come up to your car and be like, oh wow, you know what Darren, uh, your tape overhangs on the paint right there and I can tell. It's like, well, okay, but this is what I call normal viewing distances. So if I can get it to a level of acceptance at this range that I know when I step back and I view it from normal viewing distances, it's gonna be spot on. So in an earlier video uh, that I did on this back end of this truck, we actually t separated it here at this line. So I'm now going to finish polishing the back end because that side's already been polished. The line of demarcation is right there. So I'm gonna protect this here so I can do a little bit of overlap and erase this line. Now down here, once again, the vinyl um, piece, I can actually put tape just along here because what's gonna happen is, as I'm using the buffer, you may actually tap the buffer against this um, bumper cap here. So once again, protection. But now I'm good to go, fully protected. And we're, I'm gonna finish buffing this area. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna demonstrate two buffers for you. So I'm gonna finish buffing this top half and I'm gonna show you how Darren finesses the moment. So if I'm working a close and edge, I can do a couple things. One, I can put the polish directly on the paint. Do that. Now I can tell by the amount of dust, I need to clean my pad. We're out here working in the direct sunlight so as I'm talking, this polish continues to dry and I need to release it. So now that it's been released and probably half of it has just floated onto my lens, as I'm working, it's gonna be less dusty as I'm working. So I just finessed that area. That's not the only way you can do it. I can actually apply the polish to the pad, which is generally the preferred method. But in this situation, because I know I'm gonna be working against an edge and the center of this pad is not going to be getting that edge. I'm going to finesse and nuance this edge with the edge of this pad itself. Therefore, I wanna get more of the polish on the edge of the pad versus the center of the pad. So I'm just going to 
dispense the polish on the edge of the pad. Now I can come in and literally what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of rocking this against an uneven panel or a panel that's not completely fat, flat, so that I don't have polish that wants to sling in unwanted areas. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but what's happening, and this is why this is called a random orbital. Yes, yes, it's also a dual action. And then what that means is it spins, vibrates in two different and distinct patterns. It spins, but it also vibrates like this. It's random because only one of those movements, the vibration in this tool is driven by a gear. So it will continue to vibrate, but it will stop spinning. So you'll notice when I'm up on an edge, and when you go up on an edge, you create more friction, more resistance, and that will prevent this pad from actually spinning that way. It will just continue to vibrate. So you don't need to be overly concerned by that. You just need to be aware of the, dis of the difference between, for example, a gear-driven forced rotation dual action polisher. This is a random, because the randomness comes from the ability for you to stop this from spinning, which is a natural byproduct of additional friction. So at a level, that's kind of the bad news because you kind of lose control. But it's mostly the good news, especially for beginners, because it makes this tool safer rather than less safe. So that is the trade-off. But just know you can still finesse these edges. What I want to do for I don't know, added viewing pleasure, is introduce the world of a rotary polisher. So most beginners will be highly afraid of using a rotary polisher because there's endless stories that uh, will strike the fear of God into you about these. The reality is, is that most of those pseudo experts on YouTube actually don't know how to use a rotary. So they actually can't even show you how to use a rotary. They don't know how to use it themselves. But I, and I will make additional videos about this, will show you that I can actually have more control with a rotary than I can a dual action, which now Hunter, my son, is holding. Let me illustrate an example. First off, a rotary spins on a single axis point. One axis point, one movement, it just spins. So there's none of this vibration. It's just a spin. So you'll notice that I can maintain a line right here and this will continue to maintain that exact space right there. A random orbital will bounce around. It'll vibrate. Let me demonstrate what I mean for you. So I'm going to apply a little polish to this and the same holds true with a wool pad as it does with a foam pad which is you need to keep it clean in between but the tool for this is what's called a spur. It literally looks like the spurs that they put on boots. So I'm now going to finesse this line even further, especially remove this line of demarcation right here. Here's a line of demarcation. Here's my polish just really sporadically put around the pad. I'm just going to kind of tap this in so it doesn't fling all over the place. So what I'm able to do with a rotary is maintain more control because I know that this perimeter will be constant as this spins. 
Is there still a little movement? Yeah, but we're talking about a 16th to an eighth of an inch where it, you know, it's uneven. Way more than a random orbital. So that means that I can actually maintain more control, even though most people re would call this machine a more dangerous machine, especially if you're a beginner. So there is a certain learning curve that's required for this, which is why most guys don't know how to use one. So I can make all kinds of compelling arguments as to why this is actually in ways safer than a random orbital. And by safer, what I really mean is I can have more control. Also, because this spins in one direction and it's so powerful, I would have a very difficult time in getting this to stall. Stalling means that I would apply so much pressure that it would stop spinning. I would probably rip off my arms or rip off the paint if I was to apply enough pressure to get that to truly stall. What this translates to the working world is that I can finesse the pad. So I can go down where it's flat and disperse the uh, friction and the resistance on the entire pad. Or I can go up on an edge and um, concentrate that friction and resistance so that I can get the polish to do what I want faster and quicker. The dual action, especially the random dual action, I can't do that. This I can. So I go up on an edge and I can finesse the moment. Now that's going to induce what's called hologramming or swirl marks. So that's my initial cut, but then I come in and then I can finesse it further by removing those swirl marks, by dialing down the speed and maintaining a flat um, position on the panel, like this. And this is where the tape comes in handy because now I can hold this flat and I'm not worried about polish getting crammed into the nuances of this textured material. Uh, like any subject in the world of detailing, it can expand into this disturbing amounts of time because there's just a lot to learn, which ironically is part of the video, is how do we reduce it down to a simple version of what the industry wants to teach you, which I haven't even got to yet. But I want to finish this side of this panel and I'm going to cut to the chase because I know that I can be far more efficient with a rotary. So let's watch Darren use the rotary. First, I'm gonna clean my pad. I'm actually gonna dial this up to 1200 RPMs. You can see the spent polish being released as well as the fibers of the pad. Okay, trade-offs. Now the official way to use this is you apply product right to the middle like that. Hold it directly against the panel. Now just infuse that product into the pad and now it's kind of like a brush or an artist palette, which is here is the blend of color and then I'm going to fine tune it by taking, dipping my um, brush, which is the buffer, into the paint and then I'm gonna use the edges as needed to finesse this area and then when I need more polish, I bring this down and then I go up if I want to. You don't have to, that's just what I do. It's actually what most experts do. And right now it's flat because I'm working in an open area. I don't really need to do much finessing. But right here against this, I'm gone up on an edge so that I can get because there is a curvature to this panel it's not completely flat down here it really curves under up here it really curves over right here there's a subtle curve to it also and this is where you can control and once again because I know I'm not going to stop the spinning of this head I have and remain in ultimate control going up on an edge to get that uh, lip that is curved under. I'm going flat and I'm allowing the polish to work. I'm not going like a spastic back and forth like this. I'm allowing the polish and the pad to do what it's meant to do.
Now, how long you keep the polished pad, whatever, on the surface really depends on your comfort level, how much correcting you're trying to do based on how damaged your paint is. Once again, a video for a other series. Gonna clean my pad, apply a little bit more, finish the other areas. Fiber cloth comes off ever so nicely and now I have just created shine now if I want to go a step further let's say this is black paint then I would switch pads on that but I would stick with just a single polish and finesse it and fine-tune it so that it was absolute swirl free because I know in the right lighting if this is black paint it would still show some hologramming or swirl marks. Buffer trails, call it what you want. Paint at this light, it's just a non-issue. I've wiped off the polish completely. I'm gonna just try to capture some of the highlights of this paint as it reflects in this glorious Southern California sunlight. I've removed the line of demarcation. Now I'm gonna pull back to what I call normal viewing distances from here and pan around and show you and pull in so that you can try to see the reflections going on way better. As promised, I wanna show you what the industry would have you sign on to. The industry wants to teach you that you need four different, typically they're gonna separate it into two, compounds, polishes. And not just two, they're gonna separate the compounds into two levels of compounding and then two levels of polishing. So as a rule, compounding is more aggressive. That's the heavy lifting. Polishing is the fine tuning, the finishing. So here we have chemical guys and they want you to buy four products, not one, but four. Just as they want you to buy four different buffing pads, one pad fits each product. It's like, okay, cool because I know I want to buy four different pads and I know I want to buy four different polishes, but wait, there's more. Here we have the wax shop. So they start with their most aggressive 1000. They actually label it as an overhaul and kind of metaphorically with regards to like an engine, most aggressive. Then the rebuild 2000, then the tune up 3000, and then the deep reflections, because I want deep reflections, not shallow reflections. Therefore, you can get deep reflections with their deep reflections liquid carnauba wax as the final stage. So there's four. Now, granted, I just uh, confused the topic because this is actually a wax or a polymer, a sealant, you can call it whatever you want. So now that I've just polished that area of the uh, tailgate, you would actually finish by applying some form of protection in the form of a wax sealant, uh, ceramic coating, whatever floats your boat. So here we have uh, Manzerna. We've got their heavy cut compound, their medium cut polish. And you see that? They just went from a compound to a polish. So this is medium. So it's like, okay, why is that called a compound? Well, that uh, infers that it's a more aggressive formulation, which it is, but they, and never mind, Menzerna literally has probably at least 15 other products. In case these don't work, yes, are you sensing that tonality of sarcasm in my voice? It's not just sarcasm, it's contempt for this industry that wants to bury you with endless choices and confuse it. So yes, does this make good bragging rights? Of course it does, because this is way sexier, way more glamorous than just this. This is boring. Compared to that, that's boring. But you know what? I'd rather pay for boring, because I only want to buy one polish. I only want to use one polish. I only want to manage one polish. And I know now it's beginning to sound like a commercial for ceramics, but that's the reason I decided to invest in the company, because it's like, oh my gosh, this is insanity. 
That is simple. That is the answer. So here we have Griot's Garage. Yes, that's pronounced Griot's, despite the endless ways you'll hear it. So here we have, in descending order, correcting cream. I think this is descending. I may have, um, see, see how hard, I'm an, I'm an experienced dude. And I, I have a difficult time trying to figure out what is what. So here we have the correcting cream, which is the most aggressive, if I am correct. Then we have the fast correcting cream. So since this is fast correcting cream, and by the way, this came as a system. I bought this as a complete system. So I'm following their direction, which them saying like, oh yes, Darren, you need four different types of products to get the results that you want. Okay, so correcting cream. And then this is the fast correcting cream. So in case I didn't want slow correction, I want fast correction. Well, they made fast correcting cream for me. But wait, then there's perfecting cream. So here we have cream, cream, yes, at least they're being consistent with that until you get to a sealant, so cream. So here you have perfecting cream. So I want correction, I want fast correction, then I want perfection. So they've got three choices for you and then you've got your finished sealant, which is their end way to now protect the surface that you just refined and improved, this is how you protect it. Okay, insanity. You can label however you want. Crazy. Yes, it makes for good photo ops. Yes, it makes for good posting on your social media. Like, ooh, I must be an expert. Look at all my stuff. Look at all my garbage. It's like, once again, sign me on to boring, but what it really is is simple, and it's the answer to all this nonsense. Release, whoosh -ah. okay. Tone it down, gotta let the ether out, the pressure is cooking, Psh, release valve. Okay, thanks for tuning in. If you have learned a single thing, I wanna know what that is. Literally, I want you to type that in, not just for my benefit, for the guys coming in. What was the one takeaway? Maybe you had three takeaways, maybe there was 10 takeaways. takeaways. I wanna know what the one most important takeaway from this video is. Even if it is, wow, that Darren, that guy needs some medication. I don't care what it is, you tell me what that is below. And while you're doing that, give it a thumbs up first. Please give it a thumbs up. And I think I'll cut it there after uh, 35,000 words or less. And I will see you on the very next video.